OK, so we know that if you take a giant molecular cloud and collapse it, you're going to form stars, but you can't just form a naked star. You have to have the spinning disk, this protoplanetary disk, protostellar disk around it, just to give the angular momentum somewhere to go. Yep. Most of the mass can be in the star, but most of the spinniness is has got to be disk. in the mo movements of the disk around the center here. So, but that, of course, is not giving us planets. It's giving us a spinning disk of gas. That's right. We'd like to actually be able to create something a bit more solid. So how are we going to do that? Well, we have to start looking at to where is the other stuff in the solar system yep. or in this gas cloud. It isn't actually just all gas. That's right. Well, it's, it's going to start off pretty much all gas and maybe a few grains of interstellar That's dust. That's right. Um, so, and we've got this chemical composition. That's right. Um, so let's look at these elements. What are we, we're going to somehow turn a gas cloud made of these elements with maybe a few microscopic grains of dust into something solid that we can jump up and down on like the Earth. Now, a lot of this is already locked into hydrogen and helium. Yeah. Now, remember, this is a logarithmic graph. Yep. Let's plot this on a linear scale. So instead of the logarithm of how much there is, the actual amount. OK. <laughs> we are mostly hydrogen with a little bit of helium and sod all of anything else. Yeah, so even carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen are essentially zero almost on this scale. Yeah, so let's take, get rid of the hydrogen and helium because okay. they're just off the scale. All right. So now let's zoom in on everything else. All right, so now clearly we have carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen we can work with. Yeah, so oxygen is the most common element. Yep. And then carbon second, and then neon, and then nitrogen, and magnesium, and silicon, and sulfur, and iron, and everything else is, you know, there's Maybe just about see a little bit of these things poking up, a little bit of calcium and so on. But they're pretty rare. But isn't this the good? Isn't this actually a good thing? Because we can do a lot with oxygen. Yeah. So what we've got to figure out is how we can turn a gas cloud made of this. So the idea is it's a nice dense cloud of gas, yep. and things are going to start coalescing, okay. like lumps in a soup or something like this. If you make the gas dense and cold enough, then the molecules are going to start sticking together and making grains. And what's the most common oxygen? Well. We can combine oxygen with hydrogen, right? It loves to be bear together. In mind, bear in mind that for all of this, there's way off the scale amounts of hydrogen. So the obvious thing to do is mix oxygen with hydrogen, which forms water. It's our favorite subject. So you're going to start getting ice particles. And then carbon, you can combine that with hydrogen. That's right. And we can get things like methane. Neon's not going to do very much. It's an inert. Yep. It's not going to combine with anything. But nitrogen, that will also combine with hydrogen. Yep. So we can get things like ammonia. OK, so what's going to happen is, um, you're going to start getting the oxygen in this cloud combining with the superabundant hydrogen to make water ice. Yep. Now, you can't get liquid water in a vacuum. And even this dense gas is still pretty much like a vacuum by Earth standards. Um, then you're going to get methane ice, CH4, when you combine the carbon, number two. So number one is going to form water, number two is going to form... Um, methane. Methane. And then you're going to get ammonia from nitrogen. And this is, I guess, good in this case because for every oxygen, we're getting two hydrogen. We're getting four hydrogen for our carbon. So it's starting to suck in a lot of that huge amount of hydrogen we have. Still a very small fraction. Most still, hydrogen is still going to be there. Yep. Um, you could also form CO2. That's going to be a bit com less common because while carbon and oxygen are both common, um, you're not using up that superabundant right. hydrogen. But you can get a bit of those as well. So these are the things that are most likely to form. But if you bear in mind, all these things form only at low temperatures. Yep. Now, on Earth, you get water ice below zero, but in a vacuum, it depends on the exact pressure. It's not a perfect vacuum, yep. but it's going to be sort of minus 70 or so. And we're talking about methane and ammonia. We're talking solid mine. methane yeah, and ammonia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not talking about a gas. So you're going to start getting grains, but we're only going to get them quite a long way out from the sun, where yeah, it's you're cold. Not going to, yeah, you're not going to have it near the sun. It's going to have to be on the edges of the solar system. That's right. So this is the idea of the snow line. OK. And you're probably familiar with this when you're climbing mountains, that at low altitude, you might get, like here in the Himalayas, some desert. And when you get up high, it gets colder, so you're going to start seeing snow. And so the same thing would presumably apply in the solar system. Near the sun, you're not going to get all these nice ices, because they, but when you're further out, in our own sense, we believe the snow line is roughly about where the asteroid belt is. So, we, so things beyond the asteroid belt can have water ice. It's probably still too hot to have methane and ammonia. Yep. That might have to be even further still. But out in the orbit of Neptune or something, you can get methane and ammonia and water ice because it's cold. The sun's a long way away. In the other side, you're not going to get it. So if we're going to find this ice, or if this ice is going to form, it's going to have to be on the edges. So the planets at those places are going to be 
predominantly or at least a higher fraction made up of these ices. That's right. So you'd expect that's going to be where you're going to form the biggest number of lumps. Yep. So you're going to start getting grains and then the grains might stick together to form bigger grains. So you get lots of lumps of ice, water ice, ammonia ice, methane ice, floating around in the outer parts of the solar system. Okay. What about the inner solar system and what's left? Well, I mean, if, we're, if we've used up a lot of our carbon and nitrogen and oxygen, not all of it though, yep. but we can't form the ice. Yeah, so we're going to need to form something that can survive higher temperatures. Yes, yeah, so we have to form, well, we can't form really anything ice, we have to form more solidly things. So you could look at what sort of minerals you can form by using some of these elements like the next one, magnesium, silicon, sulfur, iron, maybe calcium, and combining them with whatever you can combine them with. So essentially the idea is we're going to take the leftover ingredients and just shove it together and see yeah. what happens. And these are actually the three most common things you find in meteorites. Okay. And indeed, they're also the three most common things you find on Earth and the Moon and Mars and everywhere else we've looked. The most common is the mineral pyroxene, which is uh, either silicon or aluminium to oxygen six. Okay. So it's using up that relatively large amount of oxygen with um, silicon or aluminium, mostly silicon probably. Yep. Um, and then you combine it with another aluminium or a magnesium and one of these elements. And these are all the more common elements left after most of the oxygen and carbon have gone away. Okay. So, and then you've got olivine, which is silicon O4. Again, using a lot of that oxygen up, and we have a lot of iron already, and a little bit less magnesium, but still more than some. And, so and plagioclase feldspar. And basically, these sort of elements, so calcium, sodium, iron, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, and the oxygen, are what rocks are by and large are made out of. And that's purely because they are the most common elements left over that can condense in the high temperatures in the inner solar system. So this is the stuff that can combine together and survive the hot conditions to form anything. That's right. So what you're going to get is in the inner solar system, there's not going to, it's going to be hard to form stuff. What you are going to form is going to be made of minerals like these. And you're not going to be forming ice. And you're not going to be forming ice because it's too hot. In the outer solar system, you're going to form lots of water ice and other sorts of ices. And you can see this if you plot the density of the different planets. I've, here's the density, this is in kilograms per cubic metre, okay. against how far out they are from the sun. So the sun is actually remarkably not dense. Because it's just a blob of hydrogen and helium. But you look at the inner planets, Mercury, Venus and Earth, and to some extent Mars, they're all you know, four to 5,000 kilograms per cubic metre, which is you know, a fairly solid rock. Yeah, I mean, if you look at everything else, you know, you kind of, from here all the way out, it, it is double to triple the density. Whereas most of the ones out here are more like one to 2,000 kilograms per cubic metre, which is what you get from ice. Even these things like Uranus and Neptune, which are very icy, but much, much yeah. bigger than that, their density doesn't yeah. compare. The main exceptions are Io and Europa, and the reason for those is these are the two innermost moons of Jupiter. Jupiter, and actually the heat from Jupiter kept them quite warm and stopped the ice from forming. So they, they, they do have ice in them, but nothing like as much as the rest of the things. So, so they they're essentially, a bit more rocky. So they had a little bit of extra heat compared to these, so they were able to be kind of somewhere in the middle. So the ice was partially driven off and giving them the higher density, more like the inner solar system. Okay. Now, the moon is a little bit different here. Yes, we'll talk about that as strange, because it is a bit strange that the moon, we've looked at moon rock samples, we can compare them to earth rocks, they've got all the same elements and isotopes and the same abundance, but somehow the moon's a bit less dense, and we'll come back to that soon. Okay. 